just share something that uh, you know the Lord laid on my heart. Just uh, it was just a couple weeks ago. I was reading just a story in in the Gospels, and so the title that I've given it is "When the Storm Seems Too Great." And um, I don't know, maybe God was just preparing me in advance that you know there's a storm coming, maybe. But uh, but I just want to share just a little little bit of a history before we get into the verses. And so I just want to share about, I, some people may already know as soon as I start reading this, but this is just an excerpt that's taken from, from a, um, a writing from back in the 1700s. And so it's, the Greyhound had, uh, had been thrashing about in the North Atlantic storm for over a week. And its canvas sails were ripped and the wood on one side of the ship had been torn away and splintered. So the, the sailors had little hope of survival, but they manually worked the pumps trying to keep the vessel afloat. And on the 11th day of the storm, the sailor and the captain, whose name was John Newton, uh, he was so exhausted from manually operating the pumps that he had a crew member tie him to the helm to try and hold the ship on its course. And so from approximately one o'clock till midnight, he had himself tied to the wheel of the, the ship to keep it, try to keep it on course. And, um, and so anyone who's ever been around the water, and I was thinking of Brother Wayne Taylor, I know sometimes he's out uh, sailing, and um, just imagine like what kind of a storm that would be that you'd have to like physically be tied to the wheel to try and keep the rudders and keep the ship steering straight. Like the storm would be so intense. And, um, and so with the storm raging fiercely, and as he was uh, trying to hold the, the wheel straight, that John Newton had, he had some time to think. And he began to reflect over his life and decisions that he had made and and, and as he looked and seen uh, the, the, the storm and how it's, um, the ship is slowly coming apart, and they're, they're in the North Atlantic, and uh, it seemed like everything has become ruined and wrecked and is battered. And he was just trying to steer through this storm. And he also began to reflect on things in his own life. And uh, he began to become a sailor at the age of 11. And uh, he was raised in a home where his uh, father was a sailor. And so he began to uh, um, become a sailor. And he was ex just became well known of ships and shipping and what it would be like uh, sailing around the world. And so it was also, he was kind of noted for his... Uh, type of lifestyle and his reputation. And, and so John Newton, that um, he survived that day at the helm, but he also wrote in one of his writings that on that day, March 21st, 1748, it was a turning point in his life. So as he was tied to the, the wheel of this ship that, that is being beaten apart by this storm, and of course, he uh, has crew members on board, and he has cargo on board. That some of the cargo was thrown overboard to lighten the ship, but he was also transporting um, uh, slaves as well. And so there was a, you know, a lot of lives at at stake here. And so at this at this moment, he recorded in one of his writings later on that that this particular day was a turning point in his life. And it was a day that he would never forget. For he believed that on that day, the Lord had sent, sent from on high and delivered him out of that deep waters. And on that day, he began to turn to Christ, the one who he had ignored since his childhood when his mother had taken him uh, to church at a very young age to learn the scriptures. And so John Newton went on to write, these words that later became one of the most famous hymns of all time, 
Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. And John Newton lived to be 82 years old. And even then, he never ceased to be amazed by God's grace. And he told his friends and that, that uh, at the end of his life, he said, my memory is nearly gone, but I remember two things. That I was a great sinner and that Christ is a great Savior. And so John Newton, from that encounter with God, even during the, what seemed like the most intense storm of his life, and it seemed like the, like the ship that I was captain of is about to, to sink and be torn apart, that, uh, that it caused him to search, and he found Christ during that time. And from his conversion and his encounter with Christ. He wrote uh, many other songs, but the one that stood out to me was, was Amazing Grace. Yeah. And, uh, and so I began to think about like, that, this, this story of uh, just how he and his crew had experienced the storm of their life, and it seemed like this storm is too great. And I can remember as a, as a child growing up, like I, I grew up in a, a family of fishermen. In fact, uh, a friend of mine came across an article that uh, was uh, related, relating to my family of how it was, uh, like my brother is a third generation fisherman. And, and, uh, and so as it started out, like it was my great grandfather started off fishing at a young age and then my dad and so as I was reading through it's just like wow I'm learning some things about my own family that I, I kind of forgot as a child and and so so myself like I kind of grew up around the Bay of Fundy and I've I've been in some storms myself and I remember uh, this one time I was 13 years old and we were fishing down below Grand and Ann and it was it was like one of those rare days where it's like perfectly calm like it's there's like it's not too often it's like that and all of a sudden you can see off in the distance just dark dark clouds coming and uh, all of a sudden you could feel you know the waves are picking up and all of a sudden it was this an intense squall that just came out of nowhere and it was just intense storm and I just remember I was 13 years old, and I, I kind of just ran to the middle of the boat, and I put my arms around the mast, and I started screaming and crying, and I was just like, this is it, this is it. And so my dad came out, and he's like, you know, get down into the cuddy. Get down in there and don't come out. And just, and that, that's kind of the place where you kind of go down below, and that's where the sleeping quarters is. And it's just like, stay down there so I know you're safe. And, and uh, so I remember even at a young age, like, just how quickly things can happen and, and, and storm. And, you know, and that's just in, a, in the physical sense. But sometimes we experience a spiritual storm. And uh, maybe somebody right now, maybe you're experiencing that right now, when it seems that the storm that we are walking through and stepping through seems so great. Like it's, it seems like, like it's an impossibility to get through this. And if we look in John chapter 6, verse uh, 16 to 20. And this is probably a very um, um, uh, popular story. And it says, and, and when evening was come, his disciples uh, went down unto the sea and entered into a ship and went over uh, the sea towards Capernaum. And it was now dark. And um, and Jesus was not come to them, so basically Jesus wasn't with them. They were alone, and and um, and so it says in verse uh, verse eighteen, and the sea arose and began a great wind that blew. So they now had rowed approximately three miles, and they all of a sudden, as they're rowing. And there's this intense storm that's happening. All of a sudden, they see Jesus walking on the water. And at first, they became very uh, scared and afraid. And, 
But as Jesus was drawing near them, or, or as he was getting closer to them, that he said, do not be afraid for it is I. And, he's, and, uh, and so after Jesus stepped into the boat, the storm that they were experiencing, that there was a, a great calm. And, um, and there were also, the Bible says that they automatically immediately arrived at their destination. And I began to just think about that, that story for a few minutes. And if we kind of just backtrack just a little bit, like, the, like just that day they had experienced an amazing miracle. So as Jesus was teaching that day, there was a huge multitude of people. And at the end of the day, it was, uh, it was time like, okay, now we got to feed everyone. So it's, and of course... The disciples like, well, we, we don't have any food. There's no, uh, we can't just send him down to McDonald's. We can't just order uh, from Skip the Dish. I need 5,000 Big Macs, like on the double. And so they watched how Jesus took just five loaves of bread and two fish and fed a multitude of people. And then afterwards, there was 12 baskets of fragments left over. So, so you would think that uh, at this moment, like, their faith would have been sky high. Like they would have been, yeah, we, we can do anything. We can, we can take on the world. It doesn't matter what comes in front of us. We're going to conquer anything. And then just, just a few hours later, they found themselves in a situation where they were faced with this, with this storm. And the interesting thing is, like, some of these disciples were experienced fishermen. They kind of grew up around the Sea of Galilee. And the, the thing about the Sea of Galilee is it was very famous for squalls, like for, for storms to just to happen. It's just, just, it's just because of this, the mountains are surrounding this lake and it's just a, a mixture of the high pressure and low pressure that it would just cause these squalls to happen or these just sudden storms. And so, so some of the fishermen would have been experienced. They would have like, oh, yeah, this is just like any other storm we've been in. Yeah, we can, we can just keep rowing through. But I believe in this night, like it was, it was like a, a bigger storm than normal. And it was, they were just rowing as hard as they could. And, uh, of course, their boat would have been slowly filling full of water. And, you know, they would have, they would have been so uh, focused on the storm that they would they wouldn't have realized, you know what, we just, if we just, you know, call on the name of Jesus and call on God, like, he's going to protect us. Yeah. And, uh, and sometimes, like, it's, it's easy and quick to judge and say, well, you know, if they just had to just, you know, um, remember just what happened, like, just hours ago. Like, it's easy for us to, to you know, cast a quick judgment, but, you know, Realize, like, when we're going through a storm in our lives, like, how are we reacting? And because uh, sometimes we don't always, you know, just put our complete faith and trust in him. Sometimes we're, we experience that fear. Sometimes we experience doubt. Sometimes we're just, you know, we're just scared, and we're just kind of like how I shared with you. We're just holding on to the mast of the boat and just, like, hopefully we make it. Yeah. And... Uh, And so when we think about the storms that we go through in life, that to keep our focus and our eyes on Christ. And, and as the story ended, that as soon as Jesus was stepped in the scene, everything changed. Now I'm not saying like your situation is going to change immediately, but I will say that the outcome will be much different. And as long as we keep our eyes on him. Right. And I know it's easy for me to say that. Like, I don't know what you may be experiencing right now, but the thing is, we all experience life. We all experience unforeseen circumstances. There's none of us that is exempt from life. And, uh, but as long as we keep our eyes and focus on him, that no matter what storm we may go through, that it's not, the storm isn't greater than our God. That's true. You know, 
it may seem like, it might seem like this is the, like, I can't, I'm not going to make it this time. I can't, I, I don't think I'm going to, I feel like I'm just drowning here. But you know what? You continue to keep your eyes on Christ and continue to focus on him and that you, he, will, he will see you through whatever situation you may be facing. Hallelujah. Sometimes we can, um, it seems like that there's, a, 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 it's like a, a test on our faith. And sometimes it feels like our faith is stretched very thin. It seems like, man, like, I don't think I can, I don't think I can endure it anymore. But just hold on to your faith and don't allow the fear to set in. And don't rely on just victories of our past. But know that, that God is doing a work in each of your lives. In 1 Timothy 1.15, it says, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. And um, know that God has a plan and a purpose for each of our lives. And it's not just coincidence that we're all in service tonight. It's not just a coincidence that God has already orchestrated and ordained that everyone would be here this evening. There would be people listening online and that, that God is doing a work in each of your lives. Um, like just even uh, working with uh, just the uptown area and just Center Point Church. You know, it's, it's so beautiful to see, you know, changes in people's lives that, you know, like sometimes you see big changes and sometimes you see little changes. But you know what? There, there's like God's doing something in people's lives. You know, we, we might say, well, <laughs> we don't see anything happening. But you know what? There are things that are happening. There's things that are happening in your life. You might look in the mirror and say, well, I still look the same. Still, I still see the imperfections and, and the things. But, but sometimes we have to look at ourselves in the same mirror that God sees us. And sometimes it's hard because sometimes we may struggle with insecurities and doubt and all those things. But if we, we just have to somehow see ourselves as how Christ sees us. And he sees that our, our past has been erased. Our sins have been buried with Christ. That we're not, like, um, none of us are, are living the life that we once lived. We are living a new life. That God is transforming our lives. And that we have to continue to push through some things and just see ourselves as how Christ sees us. And, uh, and it's... It's sometimes it's important that we have to remember that because, you know, the enemy, he does want to just whisper lies in our ear. And it's very easy to kind of listen to those things. But what happens is if we listen long enough, it ends up that his lies is just a distorted version of the truth and that we can become deceived. And deception can change our, our perception of things. So it can change how we perceive things. And if we allow that perception into our lives, it'll, it'll change some things in our own lives. It can even change our attitudes. It, it can affect us in different areas. And so you just have to push through and just, and just say, you know what? what God, how God sees me is how I should see myself, that I've been redeemed, I've been forgiven, and that God has transformed and he's changing my life, and uh, he hasn't... Like the work he started in me hasn't been, it's not finished. Like we're not complete yet, but one day we are going to become a, a complete masterpiece of God's handiwork in our lives. Like his, his finger is still, still painting, the, uh, a painting in our lives. Like he hasn't completed it. He's still working in each of our lives. I'm so thankful, so thankful that God is changing our lives. And though we may be facing some storms in our lives right now, that we can look at the uh, attitude that kind of Job had. And so in Job chapter 13, verse 15, his approach was, Though he slay me, I will hope in him. I will still 
defend my ways to his face. So uh, another version says, though he slay me, yet I will trust in him. But I will maintain um, my own ways before him. And what kind of stood out to me was that no matter what I was facing right now, I still will trust him. That's a very powerful statement. When everything seems like it's been turned upside down, I still will trust him. And church tonight, will you, will you make that a declaration in your own life that even though I may be facing a storm right now, that I will still trust him. My hope is in him. And I continue to trust him. We can look at the, the, the whole story of Job and how, how it seemed like he had experienced a lot of loss in his life. You know, uh, every aspect of his life was affected. His finances was affected. He lost all of his family. And, um, and then he had some terrible things that happened to him physically. But yet, even through all that, the, the things that he experienced, he still held on to he still held on to God. He never, he never uh, gave up. He never just said, you know what, like this is too hard. This is like I can't, I can't do this anymore. He didn't uh, throw in the towel, so to speak. He continued to say, you know what, even, even, if, it, even if it requires my life, like, that my life is taken, I'm still going to put my hope and my trust in him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful that we have a hope that we can hold on to. That it doesn't change. It's a, it's a firm foundation. Everything around us could be just turned upside down. Everything in our lives could be turned upside down. But there's one thing that will never change. The Bible says that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. That, that's one thing that you can hold on to is Jesus Christ. That he, his, <clears throat> his foundation will, is firm. And it will not, it will, it will not be affected by things of life. It will not be affected by the storms that we endure and the storms that we experience. He's a strong tower, a fortress that we can run to, seek refuge. Hallelujah. I'm thankful that there's someone that we can rely on, that we can turn to, that, that um, he, he'll never uh, disappoint us. He'll never turn his back on us. You know, have you ever had a friend that says, hey, no matter what, uh, I've got your back. No matter what happens, I've got your back. And then that one time you relied on them, and it's just like, where'd they go? They, man, they abandoned me when I needed them the most. And that's the thing, that Jesus Christ, he will not turn his back on you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm so thankful. Hallelujah. Thankful for that foundation. I'm thankful that, that he's... He's there with us through each and every step of our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. And when we look at Job, like if there's, you know, if there's anyone in the Bible that could probably have the, the right to blame God, it could, it, he would have been probably one of the top candidates. But Job, his approach was, I still trust God. I still trust him. And do you still trust him tonight, Mission Point? Do you still trust him even though you may be going through a storm? Even when things are, it seems confusing. And even when you, even to the point where I feel like just things are in question. God, I still trust you. I don't know about tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen the next day, the next week. But God, I still trust you. I still trust you. I still place my life in your hands. I place my family in your hands, God. And I put my complete faith and reliance and re, and reliance on you and you alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Job had many tragic events that happened in his life. But he never once blamed God. And I hope that someday that that could be said of me, that no matter what I experience in life, God, I don't want it ever recorded that, that I once blamed you. Hallelujah. 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 The storm may seem great, but God is greater. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We can look at, as we look at Job, like he lost his family. He was affected by his finances. <clears throat> he was devastated. But yet he still held on to his faith and trust in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Sometimes it can, it can seem like maybe as a storm approaches in our lives, it seems like at first, like, oh, it's not so bad. Like, it's just kind of like, <clears throat> it's kind of like how a, a storm happens on the open waters that you can just tell that all of a sudden, like, <clears throat> the waves kind of change patterns. And you, you, you just, you can, you can just tell that, okay, that the wind's about to pick up. And I remember as a, <clears throat> as a kid growing up, and of course the navigations, you know, many years ago was a little bit different than they are today. <clears throat> and <clears throat> I would remember my dad, he would, he would almost know, he'd say, okay, we have enough time to make two more toes with the drags and then we've got to get out of here because it's going to get nasty very soon. And, um, and so it, you, you can tell like when all of a sudden the waves are starting to shift and change and that um, there's a big storm that is approaching. And sometimes in our lives it, it's, it starts off that way. It seems like just something, seems like just small. And it seems like, you know what, I can, I can handle this. I can, I can do this on my own. And sometimes our, our confidence or our, our ego kind of sticks out and just like, yeah, I can do this on my own. I got this. I got this. I can do this. But then as it gets worse and gets worse and gets more intense, and we realize, you know what, I can't do this on my own. And that I need God in my life. I need him as I go through this storm in my life. Hallelujah. And so, and so tonight, I just wanted to remind somebody that, that it may seem like the storm seems intense and it seems great, but know that the God that you are holding on to, he is greater. He is greater. And he will carry you and see you through the storm. Hallelujah. The world may have has experienced storms in the past, but uh, but it's who you put your faith and your trust in is what makes the difference. You know, if we put our faith and our trust in ourselves, we're we're eventually we're gonna fail because we're we're all human. We all fall short. We all make mistakes, and uh, but we have to put our Complete faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And in John chapter 14, verse 27, it says, this is, uh, Jesus is saying that peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I don't give, you, give it to you as the world gives. So don't let your hearts be troubled and don't be afraid. You know, there's a lot to that verse that, you know, he's leaving us a peace. And it's not the same type of peace that the, that the world has to offer. But it's a different kind of peace. It's that kind of peace that no matter what we uh, experience, we can wake up in the morning and still have this peace about us. We, we have the peace of Christ inside of us. And I know sometimes it's hard to, like, a it's hard to explain it sometimes to people when, when their lives are in, in uh, chaos and there's so much, so much happening in their lives and that they look at it and they say, well, man, I don't understand. How come you're so happy? Like, like you shouldn't be happy. And, and it's, it's, the, it's, it's that peace that God gives us. You know, it's the, the joy of the Lord is our strength. You know, that's something that... Uh, you know, everyone would, would just give a million dollars to experience, like, joy. Like, genuine joy. Not just, like, I'm happy for the moment, but joy that lasts a long time. Like, and it's the joy of the Lord that gives us our strength. And, 
And God, he, he gives us those things. He's, he's freely giving it to us. He wants us to have peace. He wants us to have that joy. And so, so even if we are experiencing storms in our lives, we can have peace. We can have joy. The other day, uh, <laughs> I was at Tim Hortons the other day. It was, it was a Monday morning. And... Uh, um, I don't know what made me do this, but I just started to clap my hands like this. And I was waiting for my coffee. And all of a sudden, they, I started singing like, It's Monday, it's Monday, it's such a beautiful day. It's Monday, it's Monday. And, and all of a sudden, the lady who was working in the drive-thru, she turned around and she just, just looked. And, and uh, <clears throat> a couple of other staff, they, this one gentleman, he came out of the the kitchen or whatever, and he was just kind of smiling or whatever. And uh, it's, it's the joy of the Lord. And, uh, you know, sometimes they might think that there's something wrong with me or whatever, but it's, it's, the, it's that joy that, and it kind of, uh, it kind of just like, it kind of just spreads. Because I noticed a couple of people around me afterwards, they were like, hey, you know, I feel kind of good. Like, I kind of feel like joining in. I don't know what's going on, but I kind of feel like just joining in. But, you know, that's, that's the thing. It's that joy and that peace that God gives us. Like, our circumstances may not have changed, and our, the, the things that we may be going through, like, even right now we can reach out to a loving Savior and Heavenly Father. And we can just be in his presence saying, God, that's all that matters right now is just I'm in your presence. I feel your peace. I feel that joy. And we can walk out that door and our situation is facing us. It's waiting for us as we walk out that door. But I can tell you that as you walk out through the door, there's something different that has transpired. And your approach and your attitude has changed. And it's because of his presence that 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 uh, I have that peace and I have that joy that, uh, that, that, that God, he freely wants us to have. So no matter what you may be facing right now, maybe, maybe, there's, maybe everyone in the church, everything is going perfect. And maybe you're, like, your lives are just like, it couldn't get any better than this or whatever. And maybe it's just me that's been just going through a storm. Maybe it was just me. Maybe this whole message was just for James Beckard and just for God speak to me and just remind me you know what James like even though the storm may seem great but I am greater hallelujah hallelujah the God he's given us his peace hallelujah hallelujah so the storm may seem great but if we continue to Keep our focus and our eyes on Jesus Christ. He will calm any storm that we may face. Whether it's, it could be like a physical one, it could be a spiritual one, it could be an emotional storm. It could be even our, uh, even our mental health is being attacked and slowly deteriorating. And, but God, he wants us to be whole. He wants us to be renewed, refreshed, hallelujah, but it only comes through him, hallelujah, Jesus, amen, Lord, we thank you for your peace, God, thank you for that joy that you give us, Lord, thank you for calming the storms that, that we face, hallelujah, help us to put our faith and our complete reliance and trust in you, Lord. That is, that is my personal prayer, that James Beckard and God help me to continue to put my faith and my reliance on you. Because I know that if I rely on James Beckard, I can make a mess really fast. Like, just, just ask Lisa afterwards. <laughs> she can say, oh, my goodness, you won't believe this. <laughs> but that's the thing. Like, if, if we uh, rely on ourselves and our own understanding... It can only get us so far. But then there's a part that only God can do. And we have to allow God to be God and allow us to be a vessel that he pours his spirit into. Amen. Hallelujah. I know this seemed a little shorter message, but I was wondering if, 
if the music could come back. Hallelujah. And if you're, if you're going through a storm right now in your life, I would encourage you to take that step of faith and just come around the front. And this is just a, the altar is just a place that we've designated as a place where we just connect with God. But it's, what makes it so crucial and valuable to you is, is, is that you're exercising your faith. It's not, it's not about the carpet. It's not about being at the front. But it's, you're exercising your faith. You're, you're saying, God, I need a touch in my life. I need direction in my life. I need some guidance right now. And when you take that step of faith, you're exercising faith is what you're doing. You're coming up to the front and you're just connecting to an almighty God. And I would encourage anyone who's, if you're just facing some things in your life, I would encourage you just to come right up to the front. And for those who would like to come and just pray for those who are experiencing a storm, you are encouraged to come. In fact, I would encourage everyone in the church to come because it's a place where every one of us need to connect with God. Hallelujah. Jesus, hallelujah. Amen. Let me, let me uh, just speak to something here before we pray. It's totally different when you're part of the miracle. The disciples were part of the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. And when that was happening, you're not focused on any storm. You're involved. You're part of the miracle. And when you're part of it for someone else, 5,000 people plus however many other people were there, it's not difficult. It's not difficult. It's not difficult praying for someone else's storm. You're not in it. And so you can pray for someone else and they can be strengthened. You can lay hands on them and feel faith for them. But it's only within hours that the disciples who were part of the miracle of possibly 12, 15,000 people, they're now in the situation themselves. And it's a total different scenario when it's you. When it's you, it's different. It's not as easy to pray for you. It's not as easy to have faith for you. So we're not, we're just, we're just going to, we're going to hold it here. Everyone stay in, please. Thanks, Brother Beckerton. Everyone stay on. I'm not here to embarrass anyone or anything. But if you're in any type of storm personally right now, just you, and you're having a difficult time praying through that situation, you don't have to be embarrassed about it. I want you to come and just stand in the front. I don't need to know what the storm is. If you're in any situation that you're having difficulty with, I want you to come right up close front here. Because you can pray for family and you can pray for neighbors and you can pray for fellow workers and you can pray for all those people and it's, it's not as difficult. But when you're in the situation and you don't have the answer yourself and you don't know how to solve the situation that you're in, it's more difficult. And that's what happened to the disciples. They're not bad people. They're great people. But they're in the situation now. It's personal. I want to make sure everyone's at the front here that needs to be at the front. If there's people in the music that need to come down here, you can come down. We don't, we don't have to have all the singers. I want to make sure everyone that's having difficulty praying for yourself to be in the altar. Because we're going to pray together as a family of God. And that's what we do. When one member of the body is hurting, the whole body hurts. Okay, if you got family members you're praying for, you got health situations that you're praying for, you got home situations you're praying for, job situations, finance. It could be kids and it can be spouses. There's all kinds of things 
that people are dealing with. Maybe you're having a hard time sleeping at night. You're not a bad person. You're having a hard time sleeping at night. Maybe you're having difficulty with peace or contentment. Now's the time for us to pray together. Is everyone at the front that needs to be here? Okay. Would you just let your faith rise right now? Amen. I pray in the name of Jesus, by the authority, God, that you have placed in us, God. I pray that your mighty power and your mighty spirit, God, would minister to each person that has stepped, God, into the faith realm. Hallelujah. And see you walking on the water in their storm, in their situation. I pray, God, by the authority of your word and by the power that is in the name of Jesus. God, would you let there be peace and let there be contentment and let there be be God, I pray, Lord, a, a wonderful move of your spirit uh, that flows through their situation. I pray, Jesus, for families. Uh, I pray for marriages. Uh, I pray for kids and grandkids, uh, job situations, finance, uh, health, uh, mind, uh, hallelujah, God, body and spirit. Let the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, I pray, sweep all, would you reach out to him right now and just let his presence uh, and his spirit uh, speak to you in the name of Jesus hallelujah 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 God we don't put our trust in ourselves hallelujah but in all of our ways we acknowledge you that you can direct our path hide us under the shadow of the almighty hallelujah hide us in the cleft of the rock put us in the palm of your hand cover us with your feathers in the name of Jesus Jesus, let your shield and buckler come be to every person tonight that's dealing with situations and circumstances. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Reach out to him right now, church. Hallelujah. All across this building, pray for the ones that are having situations and, and circumstances in their life where they need a little bit of extra prayer and support from the family of God. Hallelujah. The church of God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise your holy name, Jesus. Jesus.